Hello, and welcome to the This Happened Today in History podcast. I am your host, Mr. Miller. This podcast will cover a number of topics that happened on this date in history. Please visit the podcast webpage at thishappentoday.buzzsprout.com. There you can download the notes page, which will help you organize the information, as well as develop your own ideas on how these events change the world around us. If you're interested in hearing more, please consider subscribing so you will not miss out on what happens tomorrow in history. Today is July 29th. The U.S. Congress passed legislation establishing the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, a civilian agency responsible for coordinating America's activities in space on July 29, 1958. NASA has since sponsored space expeditions, both human and mechanical, that have yielded vital information about the solar system and universe. It has also launched numerous Earth-orbiting satellites that have been instrumental in everything from weather forecasting to navigation to global communications. NASA was created in response to the Soviet Union's October 4, 1957 launch of its first satellite, Sputnik 1. The 183-pound basketball-sized satellite orbited the Earth in 98 minutes. The Sputnik launch caught Americans by surprise and sparked fears that the Soviets might also be capable of sending missiles with nuclear weapons from Europe to America. The United States prided itself on being at the forefront of technology and embarrassed immediately began developing a response signaling the start of a U.S.-Soviet space race. On November 3, 1957, the Soviets launched Sputnik 2, which carried a dog named Leica. In December, America attempted to launch a satellite of its own called Vanguard, but it exploded shortly after takeoff. On January 31, 1958, things went better with Explorer 1, the first U.S. satellite to successfully orbit the Earth. In July of that year, Congress passed legislation officially establishing NASA from the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics and other government agencies and confirming the president, the con- country's commitment to winning the space race. In May 1961, President John F. Kennedy declared that America should put a man on the moon by the end of the decade. And then July 29, 1969, NASA's Apollo 11 mission achieved that goal and made history when astronaut Neil Armstrong became the first person to set foot on the moon, famously declaring that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. NASA has continued to make great advances in space exploration since the first moonwalk, including playing a major part in the construction of the International Space Station. The agency has also suffered tragic setbacks, however, such as the disasters that killed the crews of the Challenger Space Shuttle in 1986 and the Columbia Space Shuttle in 2003. When GM General Motors purchased Cadillac on this day in 1909 for $4.5 million in GM stock, Cadillac was already the top seller of luxury automobiles in the United States. The history of Cadillac begins when the failure of Henry Ford's second attempt at starting a car company. When Detroit engineer and machinist Henry Leland was approached by Ford's former investors to appraise their facility and equipment, he instead convinced the men to continue with their plans to build a car company. His idea was to use his own engine design in the investor's blueprints for what was originally to be the first car from the Henry Ford company. Leland honored the French explorer Antoine Lamette de la Mort, Sr. de Cadillac, with the company's name as he had founded Detroit, Michigan, in 1701. Many sources cite October 17, 1902 as the day the first Cadillacs left the factory. As mentioned, the the two-seat runabout and tonneau horseless carriages combined a Ford-designed body and chassis with a 10-horsepower single-cylinder engine of Leland's design. The cars were nearly identical to the 1903 Ford Model A. Leland introduced the first Cadillac models at the 1903 New York Auto Show the following January and quickly received more than 2,000 orders. Leland made sure that Cadillacs earned a reputation for precision manufacturing and outstanding reliability traits the company holds to this day. His leadership capabilities allowed him to take full control of the company in 1904 after impressive 2,500 vehicles were built in the first full year of production. In 1908, William Durant founded General Motors as a holding company after acquiring Buick and Oldsmobile. In July of 1909, he persuaded Leland to sell Cadillac on the promise that he would keep Leland and Leland's son on board in the management positions. The deal was done and Cadillac blossomed. Just three years later, Cadillac introduced the world's first successful electric self-starter for an automobile, and in 1915 they were the first company to put V8 engines in every production car for the model year. 
During World War I, Leland left General Motors after a dispute with Durant about producing war materials. As Durant was a devout pacifist, Leland then founded Lincoln Motor Company to manufacture aircraft engines for Allied planes. When the war wrapped up, he reorganized the company to manufacture luxury automobiles. In 1922, Lincoln was struggling for cash and put up for sale. The only bid came from Henry Ford, who offered a measly $5 million for a company worth close to $16 million. The low bid was almost certainly out of spite, as Ford was well aware of how Leland started Cadillac. A judge would not accept the low bid. Ford forced to up his offer or withdraw, finally landed the company for $8 million. By June of that year, Henry Leland and his son Wilfred were forced out of the company that they had created. And finally, fire has destroyed the famous pierhead at the south, at the end of the world's longest pier in South End on the UK's southeast coast. A hundred people use boats and the train which runs the length of the mile and a quarter structure to escape. Strong southwesterly winds fan the flames, watched by thousands of holiday makers on beaches on both sides of the Thames estuary this evening. Firemen tackled the fire from tugs in the sea as well as from the pier itself. Their efforts were hampered by the limited water supply at low tide, and additional water was distributed from crop spraying aircraft flying overhead. Two firefighters were slightly injured as they struggled to control the blaze. Initial reports suggested it started near a restaurant on a lower deck, and damage looks likely to cost owners South End Council more than £1 million to repair. An investigation into the causes of the fire will start tomorrow. The pier had suffered fire to pour, fired before in 1959 when a fire in the pavilion at the shoreward end of the pier trapped 300 people who had to be rescued by boat. The two-level pier had opened in July 1908 at the Eastern Prince George Steamer Extension opened in 1929. The pier was a popular feature of the Essex Resort of the Victorians called Whitechapel on the Sea because of the number of East Londoners who began to visit with the advent of rail travel. During World War II, the pier was taken over by the Admiralty and renamed HMS Lee to be used as a convoy assembly point. The pier saw its heyday immediately after the war when the train carried nearly 5 million passengers in the 1949-50 season. In 1970, the local council leased franchises for the entertainments along the pier, and the subsequent £250,000 investment regenerated it with restaurants, a cocktail bar, a nightclub, and an amusement arcade. Two tenants of the destroyed pierhead served a writ, dated July 28th on South End Council, the day after the fire, to seek damages for various violations of the terms of the lease. A year later, there was another fire in a bowling alley at the shoreward end of the pier. The railway was forced to close in 1978 for safety reasons. After years of local campaigning, the pier was rebuilt and reopened in 1984 with a new railway two years later. A ship crashed into the pier in 1989 and another fire in June of 1995 destroyed the shoreward bowling alley and forced the closure of the railway again. Throughout its difficulties, South End Pier has never closed fully to the public. You have been listening to the This Happened Today in History podcast. I thank you for listening and I hope that you have enjoyed learning about historical events from the past. Thank you to the following websites for their information regarding today's topics. ThePeopleHistory.com NASA created at History.com GM purchases Cadillac at AutomotiveHistory.org and South End Pier destroyed by fire at News.BBC.co.uk the music used as the background track for this podcast is Americana, created by Kevin McLeod on Incompetech.com. If you enjoyed this information and would like to hear more, please consider subscribing, as this will keep the historical events in your feed in the morning for each day. I hope you have a great day.